Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Medico Voice. Today I am going to start general pathology topic is cell injury. So first of all, what is cell injury? Cell injury is a sequence of events that occur in a cell if its limit of adaptive capability are exceeded or no adaptive response is possible. That means when a cell undergo adverse environmental condition, then there will be sequence of changes that we observe in a cell. There can be three type of changes. These are the forms of changes. It can be either mild, moderate or severe. Mild changes can be compensated by adaptation. Moderate changes can be compensated or it will lead to reversible changes in a cell. Reversible changes that means the cell will have the cell is still having the capability to regain its normal properties. In case of severe changes this will lead to irreversible changes in a cell that means the cell lost all its properties and will never regain its properties again. So now come to adaptation. Adaptation in a cell can be in different forms either atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia or metaplasia. Now comes to atrophy. What is atrophy? Atrophy is actually a combination of two words that is A plus trophy. A means absent, trophy means normal or healthy cells. So we can say atrophy refers to decrease in size as well as number of the cell. We can take example, atrophy can be in either physiological form or in pathological form. Pathological atrophy we see in disuse atrophy and physiological atrophy we see in old age persons. With the advancing age, there will be degeneration of bone cells or osteocytes and there will be degeneration of neuron cells as well as as we can say also it as a brain cell now come to pathological atrophy pathological atrophy is seen in disuse atrophy that can be an example of hemiplasia disuse atrophy means when we stop using any part of our body either upper limb lower limb or any part of the body then there will be gradually decrease in function of that part of body and that can lead to paralysis of that part of the body now come to hypertrophy hypertrophy means increase in size of the cell we can take an example as in case of regularly doing exercise the person develop a muscle hypertrophy mainly of the deltoid muscles. Now come to hyperplasia. Hyperplasia means increase in number of the cell. We can take as example lobectomy. Lobectomy means removal of any part of the liver. In case of any liver disease, we have to remove that part of the liver and liver cells have the capacity of regeneration. So liver will again regenerate to the whole whole liver now come to hypertrophy and hyperplasia that occur in the body at the same time example is during pregnancy there is hypertrophy and hyperplasia of uterus as well as breast tissue in the mother now come to metaplasia metaplasia means conversion of an adult cell from one form to other form we can take an example as in chronic smokers normally what happen the lining of trachea is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium here pseudo means false stratified means multilayer that means the lining of the trachea will appear as a multilayered it is a false multilayer that means pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium what is its function the lining of this function it trap and transport particle brought in through nasal passages and lungs due to squamous metaplasia the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium in chronic smokers 
converted into squamous metaplasia. It's squamous metaplasia and uh, it will lead to the formation of squamous epithelium. That means the changing of one form of epithelium to the other form, one form of cell to the other form. And this is the example of metaplasia. Now come to second example that is GERD, gastroesophageal reflex disease. This means there is a lower esophageal sphincter present at the junction of esophagus and stomach, but due to dysfunction of this junction, this sphincter, there will be reflux of acid from the stomach to the esophagus, and this will lead to the changing of lining of epithelium of esophagus from squamous epithelium to the columnar epithelium. Normally, lining of the esophagus is squamous epithelium and the lining of acid secreting part of the stomach is columnar epithelium. But due to reflux of acid from stomach to the esophagus, squamous epithelium of esophagus converted it to columnar epithelium and this is called columnar metaplasia in the esophagus. This changing of the epithelium from squamous epithelium to the columnar epithelium in oesophagus lead to the formation of oesophagus that is called Barrett oesophagus. Now come to the type of cell injury. First one is reversible cell injury. What are the causes of reversible cell injury? First one is hypoxia due to ischemia. We can take an example of hypoxia in case of myocardial infraction and stroke. Myocardial infraction, there is ischemia of the heart cell and in stroke, there is ischemia of the brain cells. Second cause is physical trauma. Third one is chemical like acid or alkali. Fourth is electricity. Fifth one is radiation. Radiation can be either of ionizing or non-ionizing type. Ionizing include X-ray, CT scan, radiotherapy, etc. And non-ionizing include microwave, radio wave, etc. Ionizing radiation is more dangerous and it can lead to cancer. The next one is autoimmune disorder and another one is infection either of bacterial, virus, protozoal or fungal. Now come to pathogenesis of reversible injury. First pathogenesis is, as we know the most common cause of cell injury is hypoxemia or ischemia. Due to ischemia, there is decrease in oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. Because in mitochondria, oxidative phosphorylation process requires oxygen and due to the absence of oxygen, there will be decrease in the process of oxidative phosphorylation and finally there will be decrease in ATP formation. So we all know that in cell, there is sodium potassium ATP pump that is ATP is required for the sodium to come out of the cell and potassium to go inside the cell and in the absence of ATP, this pump, this sodium potassium ATP pump will decrease and finally there will be retention of sodium and water inside the cell this will lead to cellular swelling second pathogenesis is glucose in the absence of oxygen we already know this that uh, by the process of glycolysis glucose co converted into glycogen and glycogen converted into Krebs goes in Krebs cycle and further it will go into the electron transport chain for the formation of ATP. But for the conversion of glucose to glycogen, no oxygen is required. But after glycogen formation to go enter into the Krebs cycle, oxygen is required and there is no oxygen. So glycogen undergoes fermentation process which do not require oxygen and this will lead to the formation of lactic acid due to formation of lactic acid there will be a decrease in ph and finally there will be damage of nucleic acid and clumping of nuclear chromatin this will ultimately lead to the damage of the cell third one is free calcium in the cytoplasm Usually, free calcium in the cytoplasm is dangerous for the cell and can cause damage of the cell. So, it should be either removed out of the cell 
or a store inside the endoplasmic reticulum and as we know here is ischemia or hypoxia so automatically there will be no ATP formation and for the calcium transport outside the cell ATP is required so automatically what happen calcium concentration inside the cell will increase and this will lead to the activation of enzymes like lipase nucleus protease and all these enzymes are harmful for the cell and this all enzymes will lead to damage of the cell another mechanism can be of lysozyme release lysozyme enzyme release as we all know that lysozyme is called suicide back of the cell because it contains all the harmful enzymes that can damage the cell and if the lysozyme burst out then there will be automatically damage of the cells now come to what are the changes that we see in cell after reversible cell injury first one is cellular swelling and blip formation as we have discussed earlier how cellular swelling occur due to dysfunction of the sodium potassium ATPase pump there will be retention of sodium and water inside this cell and this will further lead to cellular swelling and blip formation as well second one is endoplasmic reticulum swelling of course endoplasmic reticulum is the organelle inside the cell so endoplasmic reticulum will also swell and due to swelling of endoplasmic reticulum there will be detachment of ribosome detachment of ribosome as there is de uh, detachment of ribosome so there will be decrease in protein synthesis ultimately fourth one is myelin fever formation now uh, come to how myelin fever are formed as we already know that phospholipid are present in the cell membrane of, of the cell and due to release of enzymes phospholipase phospholipid break down into phosphorus and lipid and this lipid will combine with calcium present inside the cell because there is retention of calcium inside the cell and due to breakdown of phospholipid calcium combined with lipid and this will lead, lead to the concentric like ring like a structure that is called myelin fever and the next one is a small amorphous density inside the mitochondria inside the mitochondria there will be deposition of a small amorphous densities and in in case of irreversible changes this amorphous de amorphous density inside the mitochondria will be in large amount very large amount this is the difference between reversible and irreversible cell injury next one is clumping of dna nuclear material of the dna will clumped in a small dot like a structure and these are the changes that we observe in a cell after reversible cell injury in my next video i will teach irreversible cell injury hope you like the video like share and subscribe thank you